हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर आयुषी पालीवाल फ्रॉम यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ दिल्ली टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द मॉड्यूल रिव्यू ऑफ पीएन जंक्शन एंड ओवरव्यू ऑफ बीजेटी बाइपोलर जंक्शन ट्रांजिस्टर्स फ्रॉम द पेपर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स सो स्टूडेंट्स लेट एस सी what we are going to learn in this module first we will discuss about the intrinsic and intrinsic semiconductors second we will discuss about the fermi level in semiconductors thirdly we will discuss about how the pn junction is fabricated along with the derivation of the width of depletion region using depletion approximation lastly the description of current flow at the junction will be discussed next we will discuss about the bipolar junction transistor along with the working of npn transistor we will also discuss about the transistor as an amplifier with their input and output characteristics So students let us start with a basic introduction about the module a device that blocks the current in one direction while letting the current flow in another direction is called as a diode diodes can be used in number of ways for example a device that uses batteries often contains a diode that protects the device if you insert the batteries backward so the diode simply blocks any current from leaving the battery if it is reversed this protects the sensitive electronics in the device next one is the transistor which is created by using three layers rather than the two layers used in the diode now we can create either the npn or a pnp sandwich a transistor can act as a switch or an amplifier a transistor looks like two diodes back to back so you would imagine that no current could flow through a transistor because back to back diodes would block the current both ways and yes this is true however when you apply a small current to the center layer of the sandwich a much larger current can flow through the sandwich as a whole this gives a transistor its switching behavior a small current can turn a large current on and off so a silicon chip which is a piece of silicon that can hold thousands of transistors with transistors acting as switches we can create boolean gates and with boolean gates we can create microprocessor chips intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors so let us first discuss about the intrinsic semiconductors an intrinsic semiconductor material is chemically very pure and possesses poor conductivity it has equal numbers of negative carriers that is electrons and positive carriers holes a silicon crystal is different from an insulator because at any temperature above absolute zero temperature there is a finite probability that an electron in the lattice will be knocked loose from its position leaving behind an electron deficiency called as hole so if a voltage is applied then both the electron and the hole can contribute to a very small current flow so the conductivity of the semiconductor can be modeled in terms of the band theory of solids 
the band model of a semiconductor can be modeled in terms of at ordinary temperature it suggests that there is a finite possibility that electrons can reach the conduction band and contribute to electrical conduction extrinsic semiconductors n and p type so students extrinsic semiconductors are considered to be those semiconductors having impurity atoms let us first discuss about the n type semiconductor the doping of pentavalent impurity atoms for example antimony arsenic phosphorus etc for each impurity atoms that is being doped there is one free electron in the material hence the material has excess of free electrons it is still electrically neutral since the number of positively charged protons is equal to the number of negatively charged electrons in an atom so the impurity atoms are called as donor atoms for n type semiconductors free electrons at donor energy level will have less difficulty to reach the conduction band even at room temperature which is clearly shown in this figure so in this type number of holes also decreases due to more recombination let us now discuss about the p type semiconductors these semiconductor materials having trivalent impurity for example boron gallium indium etc et so on doping there is a deficiency of electrons or a hole is created for every doped atom which can accept a free electron so the impurity atoms are called as acceptor impurities so there is an acceptor level in the forbidden gap above the valence band which is clearly shown in this figure so a very small energy is required for an electron to leave the valence band and occupy the acceptor energy level hence holes constitutes larger number of carriers in the semiconductor material fermi level in semiconductors fermi level in semiconductors is defined as the energy level which has the probability of occupancy of 1 by 2 so fermi level certainly is a useful energy level for semiconductors and plays an important role in the development of theory of semiconductors fermi level varies with the doping concentration and temperature and its position is given by efi equal to ec plus ev by 2 plus 3 by 4 kt ln mh star by mc star plus kt by 2 ln n by p for intrinsic semiconductor that is undoped electrons and holes concentrations are equal that is n equal to p and we assume mh star and mc star approximately equal so efi is approximately equal to ec plus ev by 2 equal to eg by so for moderately doped n type semiconductor n equal to nd and pn equal to ni square by nd so using equations 1 and 2 efn equal to intrinsic position plus kt ln nd by ni for moderately doped p type semiconductor p equal to na and np equal to ni square by na so efp equal to intrinsic position minus kt ln na by ni 
So equation 3 shows that the Fermi level shifts towards the conduction band for n-type semiconductor and the shift increases with increase in the doping concentration which is clearly shown in this figure. Now as noted from this figure that the Fermi level shifts towards the balance band for p-type semiconductor and shift increases with increase in doping concentration. PN junction fabrication. Now when a material of p-type is brought in contact with the n-type material, a junction is formed. When a PN junction is formed, donor ions after represented by a plus sign because after this atom will donate an electron it will become a positive ion the accepted ions are represented by a minus sign as they accept an electron and becomes negative so the accepted ion has one hole associated with it and donor ion has one electron associated with it which is systematically shown in this figure so there is a density gradient across the junction as a result electron diffuses from n side to p side across the junction while holes diffuse from p type to n type so electrons and holes coming from opposite directions they recombine and disappear so across the junction there is a region where mobile charges are not present and it is called as the depletion region since it is depleted of mobile charge carriers this is also called as the space charge region or transition region this give rise to a net positive charge in n region and a net negative charge in the p region at the junction there is no charge at equilibrium no net current flows across the junction so jp drift plus jp diffusion equal to zero and jn drift plus jn diffusion is equal to zero this implies that electric field builds up to the point where net current is zero at equilibrium let us assume that electric field is zero in the neutral regions outside w thus there is a constant potential vn in the neutral n material and vp in the neutral p material so a potential difference v naught is developed between the two and this is v naught equal to vn minus vp where v naught is the contact potential which appears across w that is the built in potential this is required to maintain the equilibrium at the junction and it is not the external applied potential it cannot be measured by using the multimeter and thus it is an equilibrium quantity so no current can result from it at equilibrium fermi level should be constant throughout the device and hence bending of bands takes place the valence band and conduction bands are higher on p side of the junction than on the n side by the amount QV naught. To obtain a quantitative relationship between V naught and doping concentration on each side of the junction, we can use the expressions for drift and diffusion currents. Space charge at the junction. So, students, this figure shows the variation of the electric field charge density and electrostatic potential energy with the distance across the depletion region of pn junction diode so as you can see 
from this figure rho is zero at the junction that is positive to n side and negative to p side due to uncompensated donor and acceptor ions respectively this distribution constitutes an electric dipole layer giving rise to electric lines of flux from n side to p side corresponding to negative field intensity so equilibrium is attained when the field is strong enough to restrain the process of diffusion the last two graphs gives us the variation of potential energy that is potential multiplied by charge and the last one gives us the variation of potential energy barrier against the flow of electrons from inside across the junction now students according to the depletion approximation the charge density on inside is equal to q multiplied by the concentration of donor ions nd the charge density on p side is minus q multiplied by acceptor ion concentration na so carrier depletion within w and neutrality is outside w dipole is formed due to uncompensated charges on either side of the junction must have equal number of charges on either side that is q plus equal to modulus of minus q minus that is the transition region may extend into the p and the n regions unequally depending on the unequal doping of the two sides for example if p side is more lightly doped than n side that is na is less than nd the space charge region must extend further into the p material than into the n to uncover the equivalent amount of charge so for a sample of cross section area a the total uncompensated charge on either side of the junction is q a x p not na equal to q a x n not nd x p not is the penetration of space charge region into the p material and x n not is the penetration into the n material so summing the two that is x n not plus x p not gives us the w that is the total width of the depletion region so to calculate the electric field distribution within the transition region let us begin with the point form of gauss's law which relates the gradient of the electric field to the local space charge at any point x that is de by dx equal to q by epsilon multiplied by p minus n plus nd plus minus na minus where p is the positive charge n is the negative charge nd plus is the positive donor ion impurities on n side and n minus negative ions acceptor impurities on p side in the space charge region there are no free charge carriers so we can neglect the contribution of pn to space charge with this approximation we have two regions of constant space charge that is one varying from 0 to x n not where d by dx equal to q n d by epsilon and the other region is minus x p not to 0 where d by dx equal to minus q by epsilon n a so assuming complete ionization of impurities that is n d plus equal to n d and n a minus equal to n a within the transition region e has two slopes positive on n side e increasing with x negative on p side 
E is becoming more negative with X. It has maximum value E naught at X equal to 0. So E can be calculated by equation 10 and 11. That is integral E naught to 0 dE equal to Q by epsilon nd integral 0 to xn naught dx for 0 for x varying from 0 to xn naught and for x varying from minus xp naught to 0 integral 0 to e naught de equal to minus q by epsilon na multiplied by integral minus xp naught to 0 dx. This implies 0 minus e naught equal to q by epsilon nd multiplied by xn naught minus 0 and e naught minus 0 equal to minus q by epsilon na multiplied by 0 plus xp naught which implies e naught equal to minus q by epsilon nd xn naught equal to minus q by epsilon na xp naught. So we can relate the electric field to the contact potential that is by this expression ex equal to minus dv by dx which implies minus v naught equal to integral minus xp naught to xn naught ex dx that is minus v naught equal to area under the e versus x curve which implies minus v naught equal to half e naught multiplied by w v naught equal to minus half multiplied by minus q by epsilon nd xn naught multiplied by w which implies v naught equal to half multiplied by q by epsilon nd xn naught multiplied by w so the balance of charge requirement leads to xn naught nd equal to xp naught na and we know that w equal to xn naught plus xp naught so we can write xn naught equal to xp naught na by nd equal to w minus xn naught multiplied by na by nd or we can express that xn naught equal to w multiplied by na by na plus nd now equation 16 becomes v naught equal to half q by epsilon nd multiplied by w na by na plus nd multiplied by w. So v naught becomes equal to half q by epsilon na nd by na plus nd multiplied by w square. So we can derive the expression for W which is given by 2 epsilon V naught Na plus Nd by Q multiplied by Na by Nd whole to the power half. So this expression that is the width of the transition region has been derived in the terms of the contact potential, the doping concentration and Q and epsilon. Now using the equation which is V0 equal to KT by Q ln Na Nd by Ni square, the equation 18 or the above equation becomes putting the value of V0 in the expression for W, we get W equal to 2 epsilon KT by Q ln Na Nd by Ni square multiplied by 1 by Na plus 1 by Nd to the power half. So the penetration of the transition region into the N material and the P material is given by X P naught is equal to W by 1 plus Na by Nd. Or we can say that Xn naught equal to W Na by Na plus Nd. So after putting the values of the W and the Na, we can get the expressions of Xp naught and Xn naught. So from these equations, we can say that the transition region extends farther into the N site 
with lighter doping. If Na is very much less than Nd, which is equal to Xp0, it is large as compared to Xn0. Let us now discuss about the current flow at the junction. So, this figure shows or describes the current flow in the three configurations that is at equilibrium, when a forward voltage is applied, and in the case of reverse bias. The electrostatic potential barrier is lowered at the junction by a forward bias Vf from the equilibrium contact potential V0 to a smaller value V0 minus Vf. This lowering of potential occurs because a forward bias raises the electrostatic potential of P side compared to the N side. For reverse bias, V equal to minus Vr the electrostatic potential of P side is depressed relative to N side and potential barrier at the junction becomes larger V0 plus Vr. Now we have already expressed the expressions for W, Xp0 and Xn0. In forward bias and reverse bias condition, that is, we can replace V0 by V0 minus Vf and V0 plus Vr. In the case of forward bias and reverse bias conditions respectively. So the height of the electron energy barrier is equal to Q multiplied by the height of electrostatic potential barrier. Hence the bands expand less under forward bias Q V0 minus Vf and more under reverse bias Q V0 plus Vr compared to the correspondingly equilibrium values Q V0. So there are two types of currents in a PN junction diode. Diffusion current which is dependent on the potential barrier. With forward bias the height, the barrier height is lowered to V0 minus Vf. And many electrons in the N side conduction band have sufficient energy to diffuse to P side over the small barrier. And next we have the drift current, which is independent of the potential barrier. This is because the drift current is not dependent on how fast the minority carriers can cross, but it is dependent on the applied voltage. So this graph shows the current versus voltage characteristics that is forward and reverse characteristics of a PN junction diode. In forward bias that is V equal to Vf probability that a carrier can diffuse through the junction is increased by exponential QVf by Kt. In forward bias the diffusion current equal to the equilibrium value multiplied by the exponential QVF by KT. In reverse bias, V equal to minus VR. So diffusion current is equal to the equilibrium current reduced by some factor. Equilibrium diffusion current is given by I generation. So diffusion current with applied bias is equal to I generation its modulus multiplied by exponential QV by KT. So the total current will be the diffusion current minus the absolute value of the generated current. So we can write I equal to I naught multiplied by exponential QV by KT minus 1. So here we can replace V by VF and by minus Vr in forward bias and reverse bias conditions respectively. So when V is positive, then it is greater than few Kt by Q. The exponential term is much greater than uni uh, this unity and the current increases exponentially with the applied voltage. Now when V is negative, exponential term becomes zero. 
and i is a constant which is equal to minus i naught this negative generated current is also called as the reverse saturation current bipolar junction transistor bjt so a transistor consists of two pn junctions formed by sandwiching either p type or n type semiconductor between a pair of opposite types as shown in this figure so here b is the base which is the middle section of two pn junctions c is the collector which collects the charges emitter is e which is heavily doped base is lightly doped and collector is moderately doped which is explained in this figure now students note that emitter base junction is always forward biased and collector base junction is always reverse biased emitter base junction offers low resistance while collector base junction offers high resistance so in the absence of emitter it is seen that no current flows through the collector base junction practically emitter base junction is forward biased which causes emitter current to flow it is seen that this emitter current almost entirely flows in the collector circuit so ic is approximately equal to ie let us now discuss about the working of npn transistor forward bias causes the electrons in the n region to flow towards the base and constitutes the emitter current ie so in base electrons tends to combine with the holes majority carriers in p region as depicted in this figure since base is lightly doped and very thin very few electrons combine with the holes less than 5% to constitute the base current ib rest of the electrons greater than 95% cross over into the collector region to constitute the collector current ic through diffusion of minority carriers across the reverse bias junction so students according to the kirchhoff's law the collector current composed of two components ie equal to ib plus ic and ic also composed of two components ic majority of the order of milliampere plus ic minority of the order of microamperes transistor as an amplifier so this figure shows the transistor in the amplifier configuration where the dc voltages are applied in order to provide the proper bias to the transistor and the signal is applied at the input to get amplified so this amplifying action is produced by transferring the current i from a low to high resistance circuit transfer plus resistor gives us the transistor transistor works in three basic configuration common emitter where emitter is common common between the input and the output common base base is common between the input and the output common collector where collector is common between the input and the output so we are discussing the basic example of the common emitter configuration of the npn transistor which is uh, whose circuit is shown over here and the input characteristics will be between ib versus vbe for different values of vce so these are the graphs which are similar to that of forward bias diode curve since emitter base junction of a transistor is a diode which is forward biased let us now discuss about the output characteristics this graph shows the output characteristics of the npn transistor in common emitter configuration now as you can see that there is a knee voltage which is the value of vce up to which the collector current changes and becomes almost independent of vce beyond that so there are 
three marked regions over here. First is the active region, which is the region where the collector base junction is reverse biased and emitter base junction is forward biased. Next is the cutoff region. In cutoff region, the collector base and the base emitter junctions of the transistor are both reverse biased. Saturation region, which is region to the left of VCB equal to zero. In this region, both emitter base and base collector junctions are forward biased. So students, let us summarize what we have learned in this module. First, we discussed about the intrinsic and extrinsic semiconductors along with the Fermi level in the two semiconductors. Next, the PN junction fabrication along with the derivation of the width of depletion region using depletion region approximation was discussed. Next, we discussed how the current flows at a PN junction diode in the three configurations, at equilibrium, in forward bias and reverse bias. Next, the bipolar junction transistor was discussed along with the working of NPN transistor. Lastly, we discussed about the transistor as an amplifier with their input and output characteristics. Thank you.